Good morning, everybody. My name is David Hayes, and I'm presenting today about GrabCAD Print. GrabCAD Print is the latest software that drives the Stratasys 3D printers, and it's a huge step forward compared to what we've had in the industry in the past. It can give total visibility on what you're printing, when you're printing, how much you're printing. But not only that, it can give you full customizability of fixing parts, assemblies, disassembly assemblies. But not only that, you can also bring in native CAD files. So we'll get into the, the details in a minute, but I just want to introduce Javelin quickly before we get started. So Javelin is a Canadian-based company. We started in 1997, and we have six locations across Canada with a head office in Oakville, Ontario. As you can see from the map here, we have locations all across the country so we can best serve our customers. Like I said, Oakville is our head office, but then we have offices in Dartmouth, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver, which is our newest office. Now we have 3D printers in Oakville, Calgary, and Vancouver, and the idea is for customers to be able to come in, check out the machines, and see what they can do and better yield 3D printing parts. So as a company, we believe in the product life cycle. We believe in the people, technology, process, and manufacturing. Now, Javelin specializes in a number of products and services that we supply to our customers and our partners, but mainly what we provide, we provide SOLIDWORKS, we provide training in all sorts of forms, we provide PDM solutions, and we provide 3D printing solutions as well. So from the people aspect, we provide the training so that your team and your employees and your management can yield the best results possible from not only SOLIDWORKS, PDM, 3D printing, but also any kind of 3D lifecycle management uh, product. The technology aspect of our product lifecycle that we've delivered to our customers is the nitty gritties of the SOLIDWORKS 3D printing and PDM products that we provide. We have a vast range of products that we and services that we su supply to our customers, and I strongly encourage checking out our website at www.javelin-tech.com to see what our full portfolio. So our technology is all driven around designing and development with 3D printing tests and, and documentation. From there, in our process, we want to manage and collaborate with the prototypes and evaluations. So what we do is we can come in on site and we can evaluate how your team currently designs components in three dimensions, what the software is they're using, and whether or not our technology and our services could yield better results for your team. And then for the manufacturing aspect, that's where we jump into 3D printing and out of the manufacturing, which is what we'll be getting into today. So the idea is to launch and ramp up a production cycle, whether that's from prototyping or proof of concepts, all the way through production. And during production, where there's jigs and fixtures on the shop floor for tooling, and then at the end, phasing out old products so that you can then go redesign the products that you're looking to reinvent. So who am I and why am I here? Well, my name is David Hayes. I am currently a 3D printing application engineer at Javelin Technologies. I focus on the pre-sale applications as well as the post-sale service. So what that means in layman's terms is on the pre-sale side, I will go in with the account managers on any given deal and I will advise strategically on which components work best for 3D printing that a customer needs or if a customer has a need that they can't currently facilitate with conventional manufacturing, we will propose 3D printing as an option to see if we can fill those gaps in the production cycle. From there, after the, the sale has been completed, what I do is I actually go in and install, maintain, and fix machines myself. So Javelin works with the Stratasys line of 3D printers, and we're, an, we're a, a value reseller here in Canada. And so what I can do is I am fully certified on the entire line of machines, and I'm able to install them, tear them down, fix them, put them back together, and put them back on the line. And what I find is that has given me extra depth of knowledge on the pre-sale applications because I fully understand how the machines work in the backgrounds and what the machinery is doing to yield a successful part. So it's helping me advise in the pre-sales conversations of what to do in terms of what to print and what not to print. So as you can see, I specialize in medical, automotive, architectural, manufacturing solutions as well. I know it seems a little bit spread out and scattered, but there's a reason for this. So I'm centralized in Toronto, and we have a very big medical development um, hub in downtown. And so what we have found is there's real traction in out of the manufacturing 3D printing to develop medical tools and, um, and products 
to bring to the market faster because conventional manufacturing costs so much to prototype. We're finding that hospitals, surgeons, companies are all prototyping via 3D printing and then going to conventional tooling once they have their design set. Automotive is my pride and joy. I love cars and I have always been fascinated with the way that they are made. So the fact that I get to work in automotive and I get to help the automotive sector with printing jigs and fixtures and supplying the right machines to the right teams, I am thrilled I get to work in that space. It is fast moving, it's exciting right now, and I have to say that there is a lot of stuff going on in the backgrounds with 3D printing within automotive. Architectural has really caught me by surprise. I have always admired architecture, but I never really knew I would work with architects themselves. And what I find fascinating is the fact that during the bid process for a job or a location or a building, the architects internally will have to discuss concepts to bring their best design forward for the bid. And what we've found is before the two-dimensional drawings and the 3D renderings on the computer just weren't doing enough for the architects. So what we found is architects are rapidly adopting to 3D printing for the sake of having that tangible model in your hand where you can actually see the scaling and you can see the shadows. And if you print the surrounding area and you put in six or different, um, six different buildings, you can see which one works best. So it's expediting the design process, but it's also a communication tool internally amongst the team. And manufacturing applications, I mentioned before, and it comes down to jigs and fixtures, shop floor tools, you name it. Anything that you think is going to aid in your assembly or design or manufacturing process, that's where we fit. So aerospace is a great one. They need lots of shop floor jigs and fixtures to hold certain components so that they can be drilled, tapped, or reamed, and that's where 3D printing really comes into play. So my background is in mechanical engineering, and I was a very early GrabCAD adopter because I saw the power of eliminating STL files from the 3D printing process, and we'll touch on that in a second. So our agenda for today is I'm going to introduce you guys to GrabCAD Print uh, for those who don't know it. For those who do, it will be interesting to see what here is new to you because GrabCAD Print is constantly releasing new versions and updating their software. I personally have submitted multiple requests for them to add in different features, and they have, and I've found that they turn around new features in about two weeks' time. It's, it's an incredible pace at which they're developing this software. So through today, we will go out with the old and in with the new. And what I mean by that is we're no longer going to be printing through STL files. We will now be printing directly from native CAD files. And I'll explain why that's important in a minute. So as you can see, STL versus native CAD, very important. So we will get to that in a second. Uh, I will review what's new for version 1.3. That's where we currently stand. Uh, there's lots of releases recently, so it's important to keep up to date on those. And then... Reports. Reports are live. They are fantastic and they give managers and company owners visibility into their 3D printing workflow that they have never had before. And if they did have it before, the amount of money that they would have to spend on managing 3D printing processes was astronomical. So the reports give managers and owners a direct snapshot of the material consumption, when their machines are being used, who's using them, who's printing what. And it's all via the cloud, so you can access it from anywhere in the world. So if you're on the road, you can see immediately how much your team is printing. And then brand new for version 1.3 is Insight. Insight is now an app within GrabCAD Print. And for those who know Insight, this is a big, big uh, push forward to uh, uniform, unify the platform. And the idea is to give the depth that Insight brings to the table for the bigger box units, like the Fortis 380, 450, and... 900 as well as the F370. Um, but for those who don't know, we'll jump into that later on when I'm doing a bit of a GrabCAD print demo. So in the GrabCAD print demo, I will be taking native CAD files and directly to print. So there's no more STLs and I'll show you all of the power that GrabCAD has built into it. And I think it's very important to understand that it's not just a printing software, it can fix your files, it can manage your files, and it can assemble and disassemble your files accordingly. If we have time, we'll get to some success stories in Q&A. So move over Catalyst. GrabCAD is here to stay. Now what I mean by that is Catalyst was the conventional software that was used to print via uprints, dimensions, and so on. Now what it's happening is people have realized that Catalyst is not exactly an up-to-date version of the software, and they have been developing this GrabCAD print in the background to replace Catalyst. Now, 
Catalyst can still be used on current machines that is that are supported. That's not going to change, but what is going to change is going forward, all the machines will be developed for GrabCAD print. And after you see it in use, it'll make a lot more sense why the industry is shifting this way. But it's just important to know that all the machines in the Stratasys portfolio will be designed to be compatible to GrabCAD print because they're trying to unify that software platform. As I said earlier, the current version is 1.3, and we'll get into that in a minute. So the supported Stratasys printers are the Uprint series, the Dimension series, the Fortis series, which is limited because of the, the range of which, and then the Polyjet J750s in beta support, and what was released recently at SOLIDWORKS World is the the F370 will also be, F170, 270, and 370 are all supported by this software. So what do I mean by we need to eliminate STLs? In my daily role, I would say that 80% of my headaches and pain points are due to STLs. And the reason is, what an STL is, is when you design in a CAD software, SOLIDWORKS is a good example of that, you then have a, let's say, a sphere, for example. Well, the CAD file has a perfectly smooth sphere because the mathematical equation inside of the CAD file says that it can yield a smooth sphere. Now, the issue is printers were not able to print directly from the sphere itself from the CAD file. So what the printers needed is to put boundary conditions and say where the surfaces of the part are. So the sphere would then be triangulated and approximated on the surface so that the printer knew that outside of that surface there was not material that needed to be printed and inside the surface there would be a solid material. And that's true for hollow components too. Take for example a water bottle. Uh, the printer would, or sorry, the STL file would approximate the outer surface and the inner surface of the water bottle so that it knew where to put material. Now from there you would take the STL file into a catalyst equivalent and print. So that three-step process caused a lot of issues because what it would do is it would throw errors. And what I mean by that is um, not all CAD softwares deliver the same quality STLs and that's what would throw the errors. So what would happen is if a designer was designing in a software such as Google SketchUp, which is commonly a headache for me, um, the mesh and the knitting surfaces in Google SketchUp is not nearly as powerful or reliable as SolidWorks. And so what would happen is where there would be two joints in a part, let's say an overhang for a building, that overhang wouldn't necessarily be knitted at the corner. And if there's any void or any gap at all, the printer wouldn't know where to put material or where not to. And so the STL file would simply say, print two beams that are disconnected because they're not knitted. So when the print, when you take that to print and you printed it, the print would be a failure because you would not yield the results you were looking for. So if the CAD file was okay, sometimes when you save the STL file, the STL file can't approximate those surfaces properly and it throws an error and then it will just print the wrong component. It's really important also to know that when you're working with service bureaus, if you provide a poor STL file to them, they will typically print that STL file because at no wrong to either yourself or the service bureau, that's what they deem that you, you would like to print. They will print the file, it will be unusable for your team, and then you will get in this tough scenario where you're not necessarily happy with the service, and it's kind of a chicken or the egg scenario. So what we're trying to do is get away from STLs, is the long story short. And the new era of 3D printing process is all about taking a CAD file directly to 3D printing. And that's what GrabCAD Print does. It patches that gap. So it's not only faster, safer, fewer failed parts, and an easier workflow, but you can also import assemblies directly from SOLIDWORKS into GrabCAD Print. And I'll show you why that's important in a few minutes. The last thing I want to highlight is the fact that in your files, you have fewer files with reduction of STLs. For those who have saved STLs, they know the headache of when you have component A, B, C, D, E, F, and you want to save STLs to 3D print all of those files, you will then in your file have file A, SOLIDWORKS file, file A, an STL file, file B, SOLIDWORKS, file B, STL, so on and so forth. So you're doubling every single file you're printing. It becomes to be a logistical nightmare. So before we dive into it, here are the supported file formats, and I think this is a very good slide to kind of pause on so you can take in, if, depending if you're using SOLIDWORKS or Inventor, you know, CATIA, it doesn't matter. 
GrabCAD is very, very intuitive in terms of how it brings in CAD files. So version 1.3, the following file formats are supported for GrabCAD print. The idea behind these, these variants of fi files that you can import is so that more designers can have access to the printers they need. And I'm a firm believer that the Stratasys machines are the best commercial machines on the market. So just because you don't work with SolidWorks doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't be printing uh, from there. So GrabCAD has decided to incorporate other CAD systems in order to be as inclusive as possible. So what I'm doing in this slide is I'm comparing Catalyst versus GrabCAD print. And I want to show you the workflow that you would typically experience during this type of printing format. So conventionally on the left here in the diagram, we would have a couple CAD designers would be working on the same project. They would all have a file that they would like to 3D print to test, to prove out, and to maybe reprint the following day, depending on what the demands are of the product design. So what they would do is they would typically associate, or they would um, assign a printing operator internally because it's just too complicated for everybody to be printing at once. It's very hard to schedule. What happens is nobody really has a priority of which job takes what. So what would happen is all the CAD designers would send all of their files to the printing operator. And the printing operator wasn't typically strictly a printing operator. They probably had a full-time role where a printing operator was just another aspect of that role. So it was very hard to manage and to collaborate. And then from when the printer operator finally got around to it, they would probably print the files when they had the time or maybe when they didn't have the time. So the other issue is if a CAD designer internally is using, let's say, um, Magix, and then another one is using uh, NetFab, and another one's using Insight to design their STL files, you have so many different file formats that the oper printing operator is wasting cycles on trying to collaborate on file types. So what GrabCAD Print does, it streamlines the whole process. So the idea is multiple CAD users can have direct access via the cloud to the printers. Now why that's important is each CAD designer can program in and schedule their build on any given machine that GrabCAD Print supports. And then you can have total visibility on the scheduling aspect so you know exactly when the prints are going to start and when they're going to end. So what it does is it allows multiple CAD users to use the printer simultaneously in a seamless workflow to yield better parts faster. So let's dive into version 1.3. Reports are here. Reports are what I was talking about for the management and the owners. Reports, which I'll show you some slides in a minute, monitor the material consumption, printing demands, and job history right from your browser. The idea is to give a visible snapshot on what is going on with your machines. Some companies that we work with have machines all across Canada, and they want one manager to manage the 3D printing operation. Now, that wasn't possible before because if they were located in different offices across Canada, each office would then have to send the reports individually to the manager where they would be at a centralized location. The manager would then have to compile the data, put together graphs themselves in Excel, and then take that to upper management and show them exactly what the material consumption was. Reports, you can log all of your printers onto the, the cloud via an encrypted code, so it's going to be safe and secure. And then when it's on the cloud, the manager can access every single printer within the organization at any given time. Now, the information of what is printing is there in terms of the title, the job title, but the actual uh, part itself is not accessible via the cloud, which goes to show it's one more step in security. So managers and business owners can model the material, monitor the material consumption, printing demands, and job history. So not only can they see how much they have printed, but let's say their design cycle comes up in October, and that's a heavy prototyping month, and they know that based on the reports that they saw from last year, they can preemptively order materials so that their team is never out of materials coming for the next October. Now, the next thing is the improved rotation tool in version 1.3. So not only can you select faces and put them on the tray, or put them face up or face to the side, you can also customize the degrees per click to allow these, a lot of these are full control of rotating parts. Now, why that's important, if you imagine a very difficult uh, geometry or a very uh, intricate contour of which the part has, you're going to want to align that differently depending on what type of printer you're using and what the demands are from that part. So a fully customizable rotation tool helps you yield the best results from your prints. 
The other big thing I want to announce is that Insight is added into the Apps function. They've, in, they've added a new tab at the top of the GrabCAD print software, and it's called Apps. And the Apps tab, what it does, is it actually is going to be a, uh, a resource database for other softwares that will plug in directly to GrabCAD print. The idea is to have GrabCAD print become your one-stop shop for 3D printing. So they're going to be incorporating all sorts of different softwares into the GrabCAD print format. And then, as you can see at the bottom here, VRML files for the J750 are supported. So what that means is J750 is Stratasys' brand new full-color 3D printer. And it's a polyjet printer, and it can print up to 360,000 different materials, not only colors, but material properties as well. So it's very important to understand that this is a huge breakthrough in 3D printing, and the fact that GrabCAD supports this goes to show how much they're trying to develop this software. Reports, as I mentioned before. Here, let's dive into what they look like and how they can affect your company. So they're cloud-based, and you can access your reports anywhere in the world via the cloud by logging in through the website at GrabCAD Print. Once you log in with your team's login information or your own personal one, you can then have access on your printers. And so what you get is you gain greater visibility. So you learn how much your machine is consuming and when it is consuming the most. You can be proactive and stock materials ahead of busy printing schedules based on GrabCAD Print's reports analysis. So the bottom left picture you see here, what it is showing you is the overall consumption of the different material types in your organization. So you can see here, it's all printers the last 30 days. And by P430, which is an ABS material, it consumed, these printers consume 57.13 cubic inches. So your managers can now go back to your procurement officers and say, okay, we need another canister because we're running out pretty soon. So the, the picture on the right here shows you by date and timeline of when your printers are busiest. So not only when they're busiest, but you can see how much, how many hours they're printing during those time periods. And as you see, that can, you can add multiple printers on the same chart. Really impressive to have this visibility because managers now all of a sudden can gain total visibility on their printers and manage the workflow accordingly. So if they see those two big spikes in the, uh, in the graph there around December 11th and December 17th trying to get ready before the, the winter holidays, it's important to understand that, okay, we see this, this spike coming. We should probably spread out the load a little bit and try to get some stuff off the printers earlier in December. You can also man manage who is printing what. Reports gives you full visibility on each and every single job that gets printed in any of the printers that are located in GrabCAD Print. So as you can see, it gives you full visibility on the job, the owner of the job, the date it started, the date and time it completed, not only that, the duration, the status, and the support material, as well as all of the other parameters. So you can look into how much support material is using, what type, the model material, and the printer it's printing on. So you can filter based on the type of printer, the timeline, and you can save the history to export it to bring it into meetings accordingly. This is a seamless way to gain direct visibility on your printing. It's a fantastic step forward for 3D printing. So let's get into the demo. I want to show a couple things and highlight some of the features that are going on and show you why GrabCAD print is so important today. So this is GrabCAD print. It is a desktop-based software. You have to download it, but you can only use it while it is running via the cloud. It's very important to understand. And from here, you see in the frame of the screen, you have got the printing envelope. So the darker grid here is the tray of the printer, and the box is the actual volume you're able to print in. So right now, what we're printing with is a Fortis 250, which is going to be replaced by the F123 series printers, which is very exciting. Feel free to check out our blog. There are more blog articles about the F123 series printers. We also have a webinar that I just hosted launching the F123 printers, talking about why they are revolutionary as well. So for today, we're going to, let's add one of those printers. Let's add an offline printer. Let's go Stratasys. Let's add a... Stratasys 370, so that's one of the brand new machines. So as you can see here, you've got your printing platform, you've got an empty tray, but I've also preloaded some trays here. 
So what I want to show you is the fact that you can bring in step files directly from CAD software. No, oh, that got a little bit rearranged. So let's go ahead and take that out. So here we have an assembly file that when I imported it directly from SOLIDWORKS, it imported disassembled. So what I did is all I did is I saved my assembly file from SOLIDWORKS and I went into GrabCAD, I went in Add Models. Let's go ahead and I'll show you. Let's go down here, let's add models, let's do an assembly. I know it's a step file, but save it as an assembly. It will load the files and it will place them accordingly. So there is our there are our files. And as you can see, the box is red, so the component doesn't quite fit in the the printing space allotted. Now, I have one of two options. One is I can find a bigger printer to accommodate my needs. I can cut my part to fit accordingly on the printer. The software cannot cut it automatically, but you can go ahead and cut it in SOLIDWORKS and then bring in both files. Or you can choose a bigger printer so that you're able to achieve exactly what you need. So let's select that guy. That's our Fortis 450. That's fine. And let's add models. And what you'll see here is the printing envelope is no longer red. So if we scan back to this guy, because we've changed the printer, the printer itself is now there, all the trays are on that style printer. So what's important here is for this file here, I can assemble it directly or I can assemble it depending on what I need. So if I assemble it, you can see now longer now it's no longer in the actual envelope. So I can click on this assembly and I can scale the whole component. Let's say 90%. There we are. And the component fits. Now I do understand you will lose your tolerances and you'll, you'll lose your dimensions that you might need. So what I suggest is if those dimensions and tolerances are crucial, I suggest that you cut the part, insert it into and glue it together because all of our materials adhere very well to bonds and gluing agents. Not only can you scale parts, but you can rotate them. So as I said, fully customizable rotation. So let's go five degrees in the X. There we go. Let's do five degrees in the Y. And let's do 45 in the Z. So you can go up to that and make it fully customizable, or I can orient, orientate face on the plane. So I can say, you know what? I want this to be the top face. And there we are. It fits in the tray. It's as simple as that. It's it's very intuitive, it's very easy to use, the workflow is fantastic to be honest. It saves me a ton of time and I'm a very, very big proponent of this software. So you can arrange the files automatically, you can just say arrange tray, and because it's printing probably with the least amount of material and the fastest way possible, it's not going to rearrange it. And then the printer settings. So I can select a model. And I have 18 of 57, so that's of these tree, 57 in the tree here. And I can say my support style is either going to be smart, sparse, basic, surround, or box. Smart stands for save material and reduce time. Basic just means that it's going to be the old conventional style of support material. And then surround is going to surround the entire component and support material for better stability. You would use this if you were going to print a tall tower that you were worried might fall over during the print. You can print support material around it in a surround setting, and it will stabilize that tower the entire way. It's almost as if you're printing a, a rocket ship launch pad around the shuttle itself. So for those who are not fully comfortable with Stratasys line, we print in both model material and support material. And the difference between the two is the model material is what you're going to see here. That's the part you're going to get once the print is done. The support material is a supporting structure, somewhat like scaffolding. So for this overhang here, you couldn't print on air right here. So what I would, what the printers do is they put support material up as a pedestal and then the model material gets printed on top of it. The part comes off the tray in one piece and then you dissolve the support material away. From there, diving into a little bit deeper, you can go ahead and choose your slice height. So with this machine, I can choose 5 thou, 7 thou, 10 thou, and 13 thou. What's important to understand here is 
that all of these will directly impact the speed of print. Model material, I can do all sorts of materials with our Fortis 450. We can go from a strong ABS material to a UV resistant ASA, to an electrostatic deflective ESD7 material, to a polycarbonate ABS, which is going to be fantastic for shop floor tooling on automotive floors, polycarbonates, and then polycarbonate ISOs, etc. Okay, from there we can choose our support material and then our system mode. So, that's good. Here it's saying that we might have an error, but I believe the error is not with this assembly. It might be with one file. So let's see what the error is. Okay, so it looks like there might be some open faces with this file. So let's go ahead and fix that. Previously, without GrabCAD print, I would have to now take this file out of the software into a third-party software to fix these issues and then bring it back into the software and check to see that it's fixed or not. So instead, I'm just going to say repair all models. It's going to repair the models here and we're good to go. So it has now fixed those open faces. Those open faces are now closed. Doesn't look like it's changed the part at all. It looks like it's done a very good job. And what we can do is we can go ahead and slice the part and get it ready for printing. I can simply hit print if I wish, but for today I'm just going to slice the part. It will take some time to slice, so bear with me. So while that's slicing, let's work on another file, which goes to show you the power of GrabCAD print. I didn't want to wait for that file, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up this webinar duct. What I'd like to do, as you can see the loading bar at the top here, it's giving me notifications of what's happening. So it did cancel the slicing. However, that being said, that's okay. So what we have here is we have a air duct for a component. And what you'll see is there's actually a thin wall that's missing. So how I know without actually knowing this file, because obviously I know this file, is here the indication says there's one error detected. So the error shows open faces, but also inverted normals, which basically means the, the file cannot be read easily. So repair all models. Let's see if it changes the shape of the part. No, not even in the slightest. So let's go ahead and slice this component. Let's make sure that it's got all the right settings. Smart, solid, yep. Okay, we're good. Let's slice this tray. Some files do take longer to slice than others, only because they're, they're bigger, they're a little bit more detailed, they might be intricate. So it does take some time to slice, but that's no different than any other printing software on the market today. We're almost there. And so not only will it show us the slice preview of what will be built, where it will be built, what kind of material consumption, but you can also see an estimation here. So if you want to print this and you want to save some time, I wouldn't print these files as is. I would probably drop this tab here on the tray to save time and material, and then I can re-estimate it to show you the, the material savings. Okay, slicing succeeded. So what it's showing me is a brief preview of how the part will print. And what I can do is I can go through the component layer by layer and see exactly where material will be built, how much, and how it will be built. So it's a little bit confusing at this view, but as you can see, that is where we are with the layer height. So I can zoom up and down, but not only can I do that, I can change the view of what we see here. So instead of seeing all layers, 
let's clean this up and say, let's go up to the layer. So then I can zoom in on the thin walls and see if there are going to be any problematic areas. Let's see if I zoom up. It looks pretty good. It's filling in properly. It doesn't look like it will be a failed build by any means. And not only will it show me where the material is being deposited, it will also show me where it begins. And as you can see on the right of the screen here, it's building that first little component that we fixed earlier first. The second component, it builds all of the model components first, and then it goes into the support structures. There we are. So you can jump between slice view and an original view if you'd like. And not only that, I'm going to view my estimates. So this part will take 11 hours and 53 minutes to print, but it will also take about 6 cubic inches and 15 cubic inches of support. So that's quite a bit of money. So what I can do is I can get rid of this, and let's just rearrange this guy. Let's see, that's the top. Let's save a bunch of material. Let's move these guys around really quick and easy. And let's say top, top. And let's go ahead and re-slice this. Should take less time because it's calculating less material and less slices. So it should be a little bit faster. As you can see, the model, the loading bar is much quicker to progress. So while we're waiting for that to slice, what you can see here is you can see our scheduling tool. So for anybody who's using GrabCAD Print, oh, apologize. Anybody who's using GrabCAD Print, you can now schedule components onto the printer. So if we were three different CAD designers working at the same time, I could see that this printer is being consumed until about 12, 15 p.m. today. And then from there, I could print on that accordingly. So not only that, but you can assign job names, housing base with cutouts, you could do job names with job titles. You could do CAD designer's name with job title and job SKU. You name it. You can redesign it any way you want. So it gives full customizability on the scheduling of the components. If I want to schedule this part for Monday morning because it's coming close to a weekend, I could. It's, as, it's that simple. So that's pretty much all I have to show you except for the new apps feature here. So in the apps feature, it says launch insight, which is brand new. So Let's go ahead and launch Insight. And what Insight is, Insight drives the Fortis 250, the F370, the Fortis 380, the Fortis 450, and the Fortis 900 machines. And what it, was, and what it does is allows you to customize where you put material in the component. So for any kind of component, let's say a, uh, well, I don't know, a transmission for a car, you could say that I want the gears to be solid infill and I could make the casing sparse fill to reduce weight because we don't need to print excess material and you can choose where you put material and how much you put it so it gives you full customizability on how much material you use how much time it takes to print and you can save up to 40 percent of your material consumption based on how you design the part now Javelin provides some fantastic training in Insight we deliver a two-day training course, whether it's on-site at Javelin or on-site at your offices. And what we do is we take you through everything from the very start to the very end of how to use Insight because it is a very robust software. It's very difficult. However, it's the same as learning to drive a race car. When you learn to drive it, there's nothing else like it. It's the same with Insight. When you learn to use Insight, you almost can't go back to using a simplistic software that simply slices the, the platform and the parts. So it's a very cool feature that they're adding apps here because what it's doing, it's allowing them to design more features and more plugins in this app section, which we should see in the next five or six months. So that's all I have for the GrabCAD print demo. And thank you for joining us. So here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or regard, questions regarding you know, GrabCAD print or the way the industry is going, you name it. 
feel free to reach out and I would be happy to field all of the questions you have. So thank you very much for joining. I appreciate everybody who took the time to listen and hopefully this has helped be helpful.